How's it going? I'm so glad that you could join us for another virtual second Saturday. And today I'm standing in the archive room. COVID-19 has presented with us with a unique opportunity that we can take you into the archives. If 50 of you were to come to the museum and visit us, we wouldn't be able to bring you back here because this is a really small room that I'm standing in. But because we're doing this on a video, I can give you friends a tour and show you what the archives are and tell you a little bit about what an archive is. First, I'm gonna put on a pair of gloves because just like how we tell you that you can't touch the animals here at the museum, we have to be very careful and protect the objects that we have here in the archives because the oils on our hands can damage paper, it can, it can take ink off of a newspaper, and it can do, it can just, it, it just causes damage when we're trying to preserve something. And for those of you who don't know what it means to preserve, it means that we're trying to save it. We're trying to keep it protected so that someone in the future, like you, or someday you might have kids of your own that might need to come and look at things. And if it's protected and preserved, they'll still have it here. So I'm going to start by telling you, friends, what we have here in the archives. We, also, we start with photos. These are some of my most favorite things in all of the archives. We have all of these file cabinets here, and they're full of folders, just like this one. And all of these folders are full of pictures. I've pulled one out here that I want to show you some, some of the photos. I know that some of us look forward to the Elko County Fair and Livestock Show every year, and some of you are even in 4-H. So this photo might be a little bit familiar to you. This one is of a young man showing his sheep at the Elko County Fair. We're really fortunate because this photo is also labeled. This says that it was Kurt Knudsen with his 4-H sheep and that he is the son of Thomas and Cheryl Knudsen of Osino. And this picture was taken sometime around 1990. Sometimes the photos don't have a date or a name on them, like these ones here. These ones just show that they're 4-H and they're at the fair, but they don't have any dates or photos and we don't know who the people in them are like this one right here. We just don't know who that person is. But other times, like this one right here, this young lady is named Samantha Schwant, and this is her sheep babe. This was the Elko County Fair in September of 1982. Some of, and some photos are really fun because they're a lot older. See, the, see these photos? We can tell that this one's old because it's black and white, but also because of the clothes that they're wearing and the way that they fix their hair. You can date a photo that way sometimes. This one is labeled Ona and Guy and Coralie Harbin feeding their lambs at their father Lee Harbin's home and dairy in Elko. Did you friends know that there was a dairy in Elko? I didn't know that. This also shows that this is part of the Coralie Griswold photo collection. So they're all telling us all the information that we need to know about this photo. Then there's a little number here and there's a couple numbers on some of the other photos as well. Those numbers tell us who donated that photo, who brought it to us, and where it goes, where its home is. Because all of these photos have a special home. In this case, these photos belong in Photo file 64-3 that is called Elko Groups FFA and 4-H. That is their home. Then we come back over here to these cabinets and we find the one that has that number on it. We open it up and we put it back in the cover in here. That way everything is organized, it stays safe, and the next person who comes in wanting to see pictures is going to be able to see it. Now back here behind me, we have what's called microfilm. I'm gonna pull this one out. Microfilm is what we use when a newspaper or a document, like a census, gets really old. And the older it gets, the more fragile the paper becomes. So we use a special scanner and we put it on a film. I'm gonna show you guys, friends, the film. 
we put it on a special film spool and then we can connect it to the computer here and it'll it'll bring it up on the computer so that we can then read it without touching and damaging the newspaper or the paper that it's printed on. Now I mentioned the census. Some of your parents probably had to fill out the census this year. That tells where people lived, how many people live in their homes, and what, they were, what their jobs were in this year. And it happens every 10 years, and when you do it, they document it and they write it all down and it's printed, it can be sent to a museum archive, and that, that is shown to tell how many people live in a certain area. And it tells us all, it tells us all kinds of information about those people. So we could look at a, a census from 1862, or no, that wouldn't be right, 1860, sorry, because I said every 10 years, right? So 1860, and it would show us all the people who lived in Elko in 1860, who was living here, what they did, where they lived, and we could see how the town has changed between 1860 and, tw and 2020. We're going to come back over this direction. These cabinets here hold all kinds of special boxes in them. Some of them have books, like yearbooks or phone books. Some of them have government documents or programs, like if you go to a play and you get a program, or if you go to, or a calendar, we save calendars sometimes because those, those give a lot of information as well. And in this cabinet right here, I'm going to show you some of my most favorite things ever. Some of you may have already seen them once. I love the old Valentines. This box is also really special because this box is made so that it can protect everything. It is an archival box and it's made from special materials that will keep the things inside of it dry and keep bugs away and it just it will just keep them safe. And then we use the plastic to further protect them, to keep them separate from other things. I am very carefully going to pull one of these out though and show it to you because these are my most favorite ones of all, these Valentines right here. It kind of has like a little string, like it would go on your wrist and it opens up. Let's see if I can do it. This one, like I said, is my most favorite one, and this is why. Because it opens up just like that, and it turns into a fan. But that was, this is an old Valentine, and it says, Little Darling, and there's, I can't read all of the messages, and I'm not going to move it around so that I can, just because they're kind of overlapped. And let's see. There's information on the back of it, so just like the photos, it has a number, and it has where its home is, and let's see, it says that it was printed in Germany, but there is no date on this one. I was kind of hoping there was, but that is one of the special things that we have in this box. There are so many other Valentines that have been passed to someone. A lot of times they're given to someone else or sent to someone and that that person treasured them and so they bring them to the museum and they share them with us and then we have them to show what Valentine's looked like back in 1954 or 1945 we can show what they looked like and sometimes if they have writing on the back of them we can show that too and we can see that message that was written to that person and it's kind of like that's kind of like a journal in a way, or telling that person's story. And then back around this direction, we have, we have binders and books where we save obituaries. Let's find one of the pictures. Let's see. An obituary is a story that's printed in the, in the newspaper that often includes a paper, a picture, 
and it tells the story of a person and unfortunately that person has passed away they've they have died and so the newspaper prints that story to tell what their life was and so that their family and friends can can be able to to learn something new about them we also have birth certificates so this is an old book full of birth certificates when you're born the doctors print out a special certificate that shows who your parents are, what they named you, what day you were born, who the doctor was, and what hospital you were born in. Those files are kept, they're kept in the government. Um, here in Elko County, they're kept at the courthouse. And they're kept, there, they're kept there for a time and then they're brought to us so that we can continue to have them. So if you're looking for a, per a particular person, like maybe, maybe your great-great-grandmother and she was born in Elko, you could come in and you could find her birth certificate here and you could see where she was born. You could see if she was born at her home or if she was born at a hospital or you could see who her doctor was or if she had a midwife. All of those things are kept in a birth certificate record. We also have death certificates that are just like birth certificates, but again, they tell where the person passed, where the person died, what that person was doing, how it happened, and who the doctor was that took care of them. And then over here we have what we call manuscripts. Manuscripts are documents of papers. I'm going to pull one out to show it to you really quick. That one's not a terribly good one. Here we go. I'm going to hold my finger there so that I can put it back in the right spot. They're folders, file folders, that hold papers that a person of a story that a person has typed or written. In this case, this one is called, this one was written by Edna Patterson, and it is Northeast Nevada's resident historian, it says resident historian. This was an English paper. Um, oh, this is about Edna Patterson, and it was written by Rita S. Bennis in 1974. So that shows, this is a document that shows that she has researched this person, and she has compiled a paper written about her, and a story about Edna Patterson. Then we put it back in its, in its home, so the next person that comes along can find it, and we close that drawer up. Some of the other drawers, and these are drawers that I use a lot, are called the research files. Research files are so much fun because, again, they're all folders and files. They're organized. They all have special numbers, and these cabinets are actually alphabetized. That means they go in ABC order. And you can pull something out like this folder on aviation and airmail. That's a pretty thick folder. Someone has compiled a lot of research and documents, newspaper articles and stories and different things that they have, that they came across. They've collected all of that and put it in this folder so that anybody who's doing research on aviation and airmail in Elko can come in here, pull that folder out, and they have all the information they need right there. Now they might find more information and they can always add to them. I personally have added to the folders a lot. We also have what we call family research files that talk about individual families. So if you're, if you're part of, my last name is Mawson. So if you're part of the Mawson family, we might have a folder in here. And that file will describe what the Mawson family did in Elko County and all of the things that we've donated to the museum. There's also oral histories. Oral histories are documents where we videotape a person and they're talking to us and telling us about their life. We ask them questions. Then we have volunteers who come in and they take those videos. I'm again going to use my fingers to mark the spot. They come in and they mark, they type out what the person is doing. So it looks like this. So that you can then read it. It's an interview that you're going to get to read but that person was talking the whole time that they were saying it. So they didn't have to write it, it was just talking them. 
and they asked them questions about where were they born, what were they, what did they do here, what did their family do, how many brothers and sisters did they have, and I lost a piece of paper out of it. Oh, there we go. Put that back in, and I'm going to put it back in its home. There are lots of oral histories, and I bet if you came in here, you'd probably find some for people that you know. We passed this open box a moment ago. This is about po is postcards. Did you guys know that we also say postcards? They're so cool. I love them. Postcards, you can find them at a gas station. Sometimes when you're driving through Utah or, or um, other places when you're traveling, you can almost find a postcard sometimes. And... I pulled out a couple here. This is one that was taken of the that was done by the commercial hotel, and it was probably sold in the commercial hotel gift store. Um, today, the commercial hotel is is a casino, and it has the big polar bear on the corners of it on the side of the building. That's kind of cool, but that polar bear wasn't always there. This shows the brand room, which was their restaurant, the coffee shop, the lobby and the Monte Carlo, which was a club that they had. So that's one of those, po that's one of the commercial postcards. And then this one is for a place called Jay's Cottages. And this was a hotel here in Elko. It says it had 140 rooms with shower and tub, all tiled. 70 rooms are equipped with Englander air foam mattresses, air conditioned and reasonably priced. And then it also tells you how many miles it is from Reno to Lovelock, or Winnemucca to Elko, or Elko to Wendover. This postcard was not written on and mailed, but collected by someone all the same. And so someone who collected it brought it to us, and we were able to save it so that we could look at it and see what this building looked like. It's a document to show us what the town looked like back in, in the days when this hotel was here. Another really fun thing that we have that are often given to us are postcards that were mailed to someone. This particular postcard was mailed to our friend Edna Patterson, and she lived in Lamoille, in Lamoille, Nevada. And this is from, greetings from Gabs, Nevada, it says. So stopped in Gabs about 3.30, saw Thelma and Jess for, for a few minutes. Bob is working right night shift now sorry the handwriting is a little tough to read but they felt they filled this out and told all about their adventure and as they go on through the story they're talking uh, and they're telling about their adventure they talk about how they wish all of their elko friends could be there with them and isn't that pretty kind of makes you want to visit gab's nevada now huh i'm gonna put those back up there so i can put them away in a little while i mentioned that we have newspapers and that sometimes they get really old and so we have to put them on microfilm. But the actual newspapers are also here. This newspaper is from 1998. And actually, oh look, there's me. So here's a picture of me. I'm gonna turn it around for you. Sometimes you can find yourself in the newspaper like I just found myself in here. I said this one's from 1998. This is the Elko Daily Free Press. And it is dated for March 21st. So maybe there was a birth announcement or there was a wedding or something else that you've participated in or a program that you did. Maybe your picture is in the newspapers too. We have all of them from 1868 all the way to today. We, we picked up a newspaper this morning and it is here in our, in our archives. And the newspapers have been being printed in Elko since 1868. So we have them all here in, in the Northeastern Nevada Museum. You could come in and you could look up your family members, you could look up your home or, or friends or someone's wedding, and you could possibly see the pictures or the stories or the articles that were printed then. You can also look at the advertisements that were placed in the newspapers or learn things about businesses that were here in Elko. I often use the newspapers to look up what movies were playing in a certain year. That's how we choose the movies that we show when we do our movies in the park. 
we go through the newspapers and we look for the movies that were showing at the Hunter Theater or at the Crystal Theater or the Rainbow Theater. Um, the Rainbow and the Hunter Theaters are no longer standing in Elko. They don't, they aren't here anymore. But we do have the Crystal and we have the Cinema 6 and I can look those up. There's even in this newspaper in 1998, it tells us what movies were showing on March 21st. That's one of the things that we use newspapers for, but you can do it. You can do so many other things with them. Now, we were talking about oral histories and how it's kind of like a record of that person's life. Another special record of a person's life is a journal. I found this journal. Now, this is just a photocopy that has been rebound because sometimes they're so old that we need to we need to protect them in whatever way we can. So we photocopied this one and it has been rebound and put together with this this black spine on it. Now this says 190 oh, oh wait, that's the number. It has a number to show who the donor was and where its home location is here at the museum. But this is the journal of Arthur Bowen. May 22nd, 1906 through May 1916. And then it shows that it goes in the archive room on top of the file cabinets. And I turned it to this page. This page is kind of fun. It says, Tuesday, June 20th, 1905. I have bought a farm. I am now a landholder. A Mr. David W. Morgan, whom the neighbors have nicknamed Short and Dirty from from those two characteristics. So he, so there, that means that he has those two personal characteristics about him and that's the nickname that he got for it. Was, he was to, oh goodness, I can't really read it, but it's kind of fun that he documented that he bought a farm that day. And this photocopy shows all of his own handwriting. It shows the dates and he's written names of people, first and last names. When you're writing a journal, that's important to do because you may not always remember whose name, who that person was. Also, something else that you might not realize is that maybe you know two or three different girls named Katie, which I do. So you want to be able to write down their last name so that you know which Katie you're talking about. So that's, some, that's one of the old journals that we have, and we save these things in our archives. That brings me to different types of journals. You can, you can keep your own journal. I keep a journal. I have what's called a bullet journal that I write down everything in a list that I'm doing for that day. And then I check them off, or I write down how I did them or what time I did them. I also keep a regular notebook journal where I write down all of the notes of things that I'm looking at or what I'm doing for that day. And I just, I just write it all down and get it all out of my head. So you could do things like that as well. A journal could be any kind of paper or you could type it out on a computer. Maybe you have, maybe you have a Chromebook from school. You could type out a document every day at the end of the day and say, this is what I did today. Our craft project for this second Saturday, because we always do a project, right, is going to be making a journal. And I am actually going to take my gloves off for this part. There we go. Gloves are all off. All right. So we're going to make a journal. This is our journal. It is going to be made out of brown paper bags. How fun is that? So, what you'll need is some lunch-sized paper bags. I used three, but you could probably put as many pages as you want to together. So I used three. And then you're going to stack them all together just like this. Put them together, and you're going to fold them in half. And I fold them in half hamburger style. And that's going to make your pages. Then you're going to take a hole punch and you're going to punch a hole into them. Now it's going to be kind of tough to do. You might have to ask a grown up for help because this, these paper bags are kind of thick.
There we go. Finally got it. So now there's a hole in them. And then you're going to do that three times, just like I did on this one. And then you're going to take, you can use yarn, you can use string, it could be any color you want, it could be any size you want it to be. I just happen to have this purple yarn right here. So I'm going to cut a length of yarn. I'm going to wind it kind of tight. And I'm going to push it through this hole. There we go. Now, this is how I did it. You can tie it any way you want. I'm just going to tie a square knot. Right over left. Left over right. I just tied a square knot. And there's my... So now my book is put together, I'm going to take, I did index cards because I like lines. I like to have lines to write on. And I just measured it on my page so that I could see how big I wanted the white part to be. And then I trimmed it down using the scissors. Make sure that you ask for help if you don't have scissors that are for kids, okay? And you can glue it down just like that so then I'm going to open this up because I glued one page in so I'm going to flip it to the next page in my book here now I used glue but you could also use double-sided tape or even some of you might even have washi tape um, or maybe your mom does if your mom has washi tape make sure you ask permission before you use it don't use something that's your mom's without asking permission. And then I'm gonna glue it in here. And push it down. There we go. And now I have a page where I can draw a picture. I have a page where I can write a story and then I can draw a picture. And because of the way that I folded this where I have this little flap right here, I could put a little bit of tape, oops, I could put a little bit of tape on the ends right here, and then I could have a little pocket where I could tuck something in. Maybe a photo of myself, or maybe I found, maybe a penny that I found. I could just tuck something in there, and then I have it. And then there's my journal. I can write my story down, and I can talk about what I did today, or I can write what I did for the summer. And it would just be super fun, a super fun thing to save. And you could even someday bring it to the museum. And we could all learn about what you did in your summer of 2020. You can decorate it. You can use markers and crayons. All of the supplies are here. We'll post a supply picture with this photo, with this video, so that you can collect all the supplies and things that you need then too. Oh, my friends. The archives are open to anyone who needs to use them to do research. You could always ask a parent to bring you in if there's something that you want to look up and come in with your parents and we can help you out. You can always ask for me, Miss Diet, or you could ask for Tony. She's our archivist. And we'll be happy to help you find some things about your family or about your home. We hope to see you here at the museum. Please know that we are open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. Unfortunately, we cannot have big gatherings yet, like our second Saturday activities or our movies that we enjoy hosting. But we can still come in, you can still come in and explore the museum and look at things. We have several new exhibits that have gone up and they're super fun and you can learn a lot of new things about our town. So please come in and see us. Thanks, friends.